Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday described NRIs as India's brand ambassadors and said they were the symbols of the country's capabilities. The Prime Minister was inaugurating the 15th Pravasi Bharatiya Divas Convention in his parliamentary constituency of Varanasi. For the first time, the three-day-long convention is being organized from January 21st to 23rd instead of January 9th to allow participants to visit the Kumbh Mela in Prayagraj and attend the Republic Day Parade in the national capital. The theme of this year's convention is role of Indian diaspora in building new India. The Prime Minister of Mauritius, Pravind Jugnath, is the chief guest of the convention, while Himanshu Gulati, Member of Parliament of Norway, is the special guest. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the potential of NRIs and PIOs. Joining me on the program today are Ashok Sajanhar, former ambassador, K. Badrinath, editor-in-chief, Financial Chronicle, and Sriram Chaulia, Dean, Jindal School of International Affairs. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Dr. Badrinath just said, Sriram Chaulia, you know, uh, is there a great opportunity, really, as far as India is concerned, looking at how events around the world are shaping up. Look at Brexit, you look at the shutdown in the United States, you look at the protests in France, in Greece, all across uh, Europe, Germany too, going through a tough time. There's a massive slowdown in China as well. So massive opportunity for India as well. Yes, Frank. And, and, I... and we can use this Indian diaspora really to try and, you know, to try and fill up the vacuum in all these places. <clears throat> That's right. I think uh, our diaspora is feeling a lot of confidence about India. And Prime Minister Modi is projecting that, you know, and uh, he has really wooed them very hard uh, in the last five years, and uh, it is yielding benefits as well. I mean, just to put some, you know, figures out there, 70 billion or more remittances is what we are getting, US dollars uh, per annum as of last year. That's a sizable chunk of our GDP. And uh, secondly, you know, you look at specific sectors, you go down to real estate, for example, uh, more than 10 billion US dollars have come from uh, the NRIs and the uh, overseas citizens of India. So they are in many driving 10 to 15 percent of almost all the property boom that we are seeing in urban areas, especially in India, is driven by these um, uh, overseas citizens of India. So they are contributing. I think Prime Minister wants more, Badri is right, because he wants them to do FDI in manufacturing. Mm. And that has not materialized yet in us any sizable numbers. And then the other thing, the startups, you see, he spoke about how the NRI mentors in specific uh, technological or entrepreneurial fields can be made to advise uh, young Indians who have good ideas. So these are, you know, ways by which they can give back to India in a big way. I mean, the cultural bonds are there and, you know, the Kumbh Mela is really like a bonus for many of the visitors this year at the, uh, for the uh, Pravasi Bharti Divas. But uh, what I think we are looking for is economic gains. There's also one more aspect, uh, Frank, which our audience should know, which is the political lobbying on behalf of Indian interests. This, I think, Prime Minister Modi has achieved uh, in the last five years by unifying a lot of our diaspora organizations. The BJP and uh, especially Prime Minister himself has been, you know, uh, goading them to set aside their narrow differences, come together as one unit. You know, like when you are uh, an Indian um, in the UAE, for example, or in Malaysia of Indian origin, it doesn't matter whether you're from Bihar or Kerala or from Manipur, right? You should all come together and show a joint face that we belong to India as a whole. So while there is diversity, we must also be able to uh, have a kind of a common strategy for, uh, you know, pooling the uh, talents and, and the identity into one national identity. That, I think, we have achieved. So you look at some of the landmark agreements uh, with the U.S. as well as with uh, many other parts of the world, the stronger our overseas Indian uh, uh, community is as a lobby on behalf of India and Indian national interest, the better off we are. So those kind of things we have achieved in the last five years. And even policy initiatives, Frank, just to rattle out a few, you know, we have made it a lot easier for the NRIs and the OCIs to invest in India. We've made it equivalent to domestic investment. We've created single windows. We have created, you know, uh, all kinds of um, uh, schemes by which we can attract uh, their resources back. And most importantly, what Prime Minister is conveying is our governance record has improved. The corruption levels have declined. Ease of doing business, if we are now up to 77 from what used to be 140 uh, uh, just a few years ago, it should give confidence, right? And that's what he's trying to send them. India has already changed. You are part of the change. Hmm. It will change even further, but we need your support. And I think that's a very big change in the mindset. In the past, our leaders, our politicians used to 
practically disown the diaspora, saying you got nothing to do with us, you live in your countries, we don't want to be seen to be interfering in your internal affairs wherever you are domiciled. But now I think it's a new uh, definition. Sushma Swaraj, uh, um, Narendra Modi ji, all of them are saying we are actually Indians in the sense of a cultural sense. Maybe you have a different citizenship, doesn't matter. Now we have OCI status, even if you have citizenship of other countries. Right. And we need to really create a kind of a brand uh, of a civilizational India that is much bigger than the territorial India. Absolutely. And that we are achieving. Shriram Cholia, what are the expectations really as far as the diaspora is concerned from India? I think, uh, as I said, we are fulfilling a lot of them now with uh, much greater concern and attention than before, uh, Frank. Uh, <laughs> as far as their expectations go, you know, many of these are consular in nature, like mm. with relation to passports, uh, when they have children, for them to get OCI cards, uh, visas, e-visas for easy mobility and uh, to come to India and to go back. Those kind of nitty-gritty things. In some cases, uh, when you have like manual labor, like in the Gulf countries, uh, they expect support for, um, you know, for their labor rights. Often uh, they are exploited and uh, violated uh, in these uh, Gulf countries. So I think uh, the MEA, uh, by the way, one big reform we did, uh, Frank, under Narendra Modi was we subsumed the Overseas Indian Affairs Ministry into the MEA into the Ministry of External Affairs. Earlier, they were two different things, you know. And the Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs that had existed before uh, 2014 was being used, you know, primarily for, um, you know, kind of um, uh, patronage politics for uh, politicians from Kerala. You see, now we have changed all that. It's part of MEA. It's part of national foreign policy, you know. And that's a big message. So our embassies and high commissions overseas have become much more sensitive to the concerns and the needs of our diaspora. Right. Uh, that's one. Second, what we have see, they are also looking for, uh, you know, Indian uh, governance, Indian, uh, you know, the cleanup of the governance system that, that we have seen the last five years to be uh, uh, promoted in a way that will give them greater, uh, you know, belief that they can put their money, money here. Hmm. Like any other investors, you know, some of them still have qualms about coming to India. So while we are attracting record FDI, we will need to do more to ease the entry of uh, foreign funds into the country through the NRI and OCI channels. Right. And I think last thing, we, what we also need to do uh, better is to create maybe uh, larger uh, bodies of uh, the OCIs. See, what has happened is they have been you know, divided, you know, and some of them uh, within the same country or sometimes, you know, in Europe, for example, there are smaller communities, uh, continental Europe, but each of them have their own associations mm. and they don't, they're not necessarily merging. Right. So I think they, will, they, they find strength in numbers. Uh, sure. to be able to lobby and to argue better for their interests. So these are the kind of reforms, if we are able to push from here in Delhi, uh, they will really appreciate. You know? All right. Closing comments now from all my guests. I'm going to ask you to be brief. I've got uh, because of paucity of time. Ambassador, Sriram Cholia, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Frank, uh, for a long, long, long time, uh, independent India thought that these were unwanted and that they had betrayed Mother, Mother India and gone away. Hmm. And we thought that mm -hmm. they were not giving back to us. But that umbilical cord has always existed culturally in the minds of uh, the... 31.2 million diaspora. Now we are tapping into that and we are, you know, making it concrete in terms of through appropriate policies under Narendra Modi ji. And I think we have now reached a point where we can say they have become, the diaspora has become a force multiplier for our foreign policy. So if India is stronger in the world, if India wants to be a great power in the future, a leading power as PM Modi ji calls, then this is going to be a very, very essential element, uh, the diaspora and the cultural diplomacy that we are doing with them to take us forward and to put us in the league with China. For example, the Chinese diaspora and the Jewish diaspora, these are the two big ones who have been very successful in giving mm. back to China or to Israel. Mm. And if the Indian diaspora can match up to those high standards, it's job done for, uh, for this country. Absolutely. The diaspora is important for us and an umbilical cord is still connected and we need the diaspora as much as they need us is what the panelists are suggesting with that it's a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us that's it for me see you again next time